Very much. I want to take a live look right now. This is uh, from one of our cameras at the Moscow Pullman Regional Airport tonight. We believe one of these lights right here of this plane up in the air on the right hand side of your screen is the one carrying Brian Koberger. He is uh, the suspect accused of murdering the four University of Idaho students. This is an aircraft that we have been tracking across the country all day today. We watched it make several stops in Indiana as well as South Dakota mm -hmm. for refueling and, and whatnot to make sure that um, we knew as much about this aircraft as we could. We found out that it is um, owned by uh, Pennsylvania State Police. This right. is the aircraft again that we believe Brian Koberger is on as he is being transported now from Pennsylvania back to Idaho to face four first degree murder charges in the deaths of those four University of Idaho students. Yeah, it's interesting. Authorities not commenting on if in fact he is on this aircraft, but as you mentioned, we've been tracking this specific aircraft. According to the flight tracker data we have been monitoring, it is owned, as you mentioned, by Pennsylvania State Police, and we've watched it throughout the day make different stops across the country. Again, this is all happening because Koberger decided to waive his right to extradition. That means he's not fighting extradition. He wanted to come back, according to a defense attorney, a public defense defender there in Pennsylvania to essentially see what is inside those court documents that right now remain under seal. That is something that we will also be waiting anxiously to learn tomorrow. Once those documents are unsealed, that has to take place after his first court appearance mm -hmm. in Idaho, which we believe will likely take place tomorrow morning. Of course, CREM2 will be there. And once those documents are unsealed, we will learn more about how police were able to hone in on Brian Koberger as their suspect in this case. Yeah, so what will happen here a little context right now he'll land and they'll be escorted from the airport taken to the Lake Tahoe County Jail will be booked and processed and then assuming the court is closed at this hour his hearing will likely take place tomorrow and then after that hearing takes place that's when we would expect at least those court documents to be unsealed the probable cause affidavit so we can see what evidence investigators say they have gathered so far against Koberger. A lot of people anxiously waiting for this aircraft to land trying to see if it is in fact a Koberger who will emerge and he is then taken to the Latah County Jail. We do also know just for some context that it was about two weeks ago that authorities were able to identify a white Hyundai Elantra mm -hmm. as possibly a suspect vehicle in this case. We now know that this suspect did in fact have a white Hyundai Elantra registered in his name uh, in Pullman, as he was a criminal justice uh, PhD student at Washington State University. So two weeks ago, police started to say they were looking for this vehicle. We also now know that he presumably finished out the semester at Washington State University and then at some point made this started making this trip from Washington all the way across the country to Pennsylvania. We saw two body cam videos where he was traveling with his father from Washington right. to Pennsylvania. 2,000 plus mile trip he was making uh, during the holiday break there. We can see the Pilatus aircraft. It's a prop different aircraft right here landing, touching down at the Moscow, Moscow Pullman Regional Airport, excuse me. We do know there was a large law enforcement presence there. So we expect this plane to essentially taxi, come to a stop at some point. The individuals on board, again, we believe that Koberger is on this plane. We'll board the aircraft. They'll then be taken by law enforcement from the airport over to the Lake Lake County Sheriff's Office, which is the same in the same facility as a jail right there. And that's where Mr. Koberger will be processed. Again, the murders he is accused of committing happened more than seven weeks ago in Moscow, back in November on the 13th of November. Uh, and then last week on the 30th on Friday, authorities announcing they had arrested Koberger. We don't know officially exactly what kind of evidence they've had in this case in order to make Make an arrest. A lot of people are reporting a lot of different things, citing sources, but officially from Moscow PD tonight, we don't know exactly what evidence they say they have against him, at least right now. And that is because of Idaho state law, which they say prevents them from, mm. from talking to the media about anything in this case, right. which is why so many people are anxiously awaiting for his first court appearance tomorrow morning here in the state of Idaho, which then allows that probable cause statement to be unsealed and for us to get that first look at what ultimately led them to Koberger as the suspect um, accused of killing those four University of Idaho students. One of the most high profile cases this area has seen in quite some time. You just don't hear about a quadruple stabbing mm -hmm. homicide. I spoke with a with an expert in, in criminology. In fact, at Washington State University just a week after this happened, and she said, I can't ever remember hearing about a quadruple murder where a knife or an edged weapon, as police described it, being used to kill four people. So this case, of course, has, has gathered national, even international 
attention with outlets from across the country tonight. They are in Moscow. They have been tracking this flight across the country tonight. And we're again waiting to see Mr. Koberger. We're presuming on this flight right now. We know it's this plane is owned by the Pennsylvania State Police. It's been flying across the country since earlier today, starting in Pennsylvania, stopping in Illinois, stopping again in South Dakota, and now finally landing at the Moscow Pullman Regional Airport. You can see ground control right there kind of bringing them in. Uh, at some point, we expect this plane to stop, door to open, and the individuals to get out. And what we know about the suspect currently uh, is he is a 28 year old PhD doctoral mm -hmm. student at Washington State University in the criminal justice program. We don't yet know what connection, if there is any connection to those four murder victims. Um, we don't yet know, you know, what what might have been a motive. That's sure. of course one of the most the big unanswered questions in this case right now. But we do know um, from his past studies that he was a criminal justice student for his entire undergraduate mm -hmm. studies as well as his master's, which he did receive his master's degree at DeSales University in Pennsylvania. His family lives still in Pennsylvania, and it, that is where he was arrested, was at his parents' home. And if you're not familiar with this area, the University of Idaho, Moscow, Idaho, and Pullman separated by less than 10 miles. It is a short drive. Again, the crime happening in the overnight hours between the 12th and the 13th of November. At around noon, authorities got a call from another roommate who was inside the home on a cell phone, alerting authorities to the deceased individuals inside. And really, for several weeks, we didn't hear anything about any kind of potential suspect or really any leads. The biggest development came, uh, I think, four or five weeks into this case when they announced they were searching for that white Hyundai. Again, that was a Hyundai Elantra they were searching for. We've seen from body camera footage that troopers and a deputy in Indiana both stopped that Hyundai on December 15th in Indiana for what they said the violation they stopped him for was following too closely. Uh, that was two weeks before he was eventually arrested on the 30th. So there are a lot of developments in this case. We're certainly trying to keep them all straight. We're going to stick with this shot to see if we can see the moment uh, that the individuals get off this airplane. That's law enforcement right there. You can see standing by waiting for them to get off of the plane. Oh, here they are. They're walking towards the aircraft right now. So we'll stick with this and see what we can see. It appears the door may be on the opposite side of the aircraft from what we can see right now. But again, this flight, it's been in the air since early this morning, leaving Pennsylvania, making a couple stops across the nation before just landing moments ago at the Moscow Pullman Regional Airport. And we do know all day long there has been an incredibly heavy police presence there at the airport, also at the jail, which is where we mm -hmm. know he will be transported from the airport to the jail. We've also learned from the sheriff that they will do an initial assessment of the inmate to figure out where exactly he will be housed and under mm -hmm. what conditions. We know that at um, in Pennsylvania, he was under suicide watch. He was under constant supervision to make sure that he would be able to be assessed and that he would be able to be brought back to Idaho to face charges. So right now we know that he left Pennsylvania this morning in Monroe County, which is where his family currently lives. And right now it looks as though he has just landed those authorities anxiously awaiting the ability to bring him back to face those criminal charges. It has been a very lengthy investigation for the last seven weeks, and they have been under a lot of pressure and a lot of scrutiny mm -hmm. from people, not just in the Moscow Pullman community, but way beyond. Let's take this shot full if we can of the plane, because I believe we can see him right there, there in, in the red jumpsuit right there. That's what he was wearing yesterday in court, the red, and it appears he's being escorted by deputies to a car right there. Brian Koberger, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students, now on the ground right now at the Moscow Pullman Regional Airport, appears he's been loading into a police SUV. Again, from here, he'll be taken over to the Latah County Jail where he'll be processed, and we would assume that he'll face a judge for his initial arraignment tomorrow, sometime tomorrow, because again, it's 630 in the evening. The court there closes, I believe, at 430. So the crews have already gone home from the courthouse. So that hearing will likely take place tomorrow. And then after that hearing, at some point after that, we would expect to uh, have those probable cause documents unsealed. So we'll get a look finally at the evidence they say they have in this case. A lot of different jurisdictional agencies have been involved in this. We know obviously Idaho State Police here locally, the Moscow Police. We also know the FBI was involved and now Pennsylvania State Police also with the task of transporting him back to Idaho to make this exchange so that he can face those four uh, first degree murder charges as well as at least one additional charge of burglary with the intent to commit a felony. Um, and of course, we again are waiting for those 
documents to be unsealed in the morning after he is able to have his first court appearance in the state of Idaho because of Idaho state law. That is when those documents can be unsealed and we will learn more about the evidence that Moscow police and the FBI and Idaho state police have been able to put together that linked this suspect to those four murders uh, that happened seven weeks ago now. You're watching live footage. If you're just joining us right now, the plane carrying Brian Koberger, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students, just landed within the past few minutes at the Moscow Re uh, Pullman Regional Airport. Mr. Koberger deboarded the plane. He's being loaded into the back of what appears to be a police SUV right now or a pickup truck, perhaps. And from here, he'll be taken to the Laycock, Laycock County Jail to be processed. But really just a remarkable turn of events in the last really less than week. It's been seven weeks since the murders, nothing about a suspect. Then on Friday, all of a sudden, uh, police announcing they do have a suspect. They had arrested that person, Brian Koberger, 28 years old. Again, a PhD criminology student at Washington State University, just eight miles away from where these murders allegedly took place. We also know that as Moscow police were very tight lipped about this investigation at some points in you know th that seven week period, they were criticized. Perhaps people thinking sure. that they weren't up to the task, didn't weren't ready for a case of this magnitude. They have come back since and said they 100% stand behind how they conducted this investigation. They know that they had evidence and they had information that they withheld from the public. They did it on purpose. Mm -hmm. They didn't want anything to jeopardize this investigation. They wanted to make sure that they had their man, they said. Also, we have learned that for several days, this particular suspect, 28-year-old Brian Koberger, was under surveillance as they tracked him as he was driving from Washington all the way across the country to Pennsylvania. Yeah, CBS News citing their sources saying they believe it was a DNA match through a genealogy website that ultimately pointed them towards Koberger's direction. Again, when those court documents are unsealed, we'll be able to verify that independently. But the suspect just loaded up into the back of what I believe to be a police either pickup or SUV right there. And from here, he'll be taken over to the jail in Latah County to start the processing of this case. Koberger did, did not fight extradition. He voluntarily uh, was returned to Idaho tonight. Uh, and for us, at least, that means we'll find out sooner uh, the evidence that investigators have against him. Um, as you can see, a very heavy police presence there at the airport at this hour. This is at the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport, which means they will now make that uh, eight mile drive to Moscow, where they will then take him to the Lata County Jail and they will take him to the sheriff's office for processing. And then once he is inside the jail, that is where they will assess him as an inmate and figure out exactly where he will be housed within the jail and what that will look like moving forward as they prepare for his first court appearance in the morning. Yeah, you're watching live coverage of Mr. Koberger's return to Idaho right now. We will continue to track this story, but right now we'll take a quick break and be right back with more news and weather coming up.